Hey everyone, this is Facade, and I am coming to you with a quick tutorial on how to use the stage object in 7.4D to render out multiple cameras, and then we're going to export those cameras into After Effects. So I'm going to show you the workflow. So let's get started. Uh, let's say your client wants you to render a phone, and um, they want several different angles of this phone, so several shots of this. So we're going to create three different cameras, that's what they want. So let's go ahead and create a camera. Delete that. We're going to create a camera. Call this camera one or cam one. All right. So for the first camera, make sure you click on this little dot here to look through the camera. They want us to go from, do a pan here from the left, from left to right. So we're going to control click on the first keyframe. Press control and click. And you see a little blue keyframe pop up. That's your first keyframe. We're going to then go to frame 40. And we're going to pan to the right and control click on frame 40. Now we have this movement. For the second camera, they want kind of a zoom of the phone. So we're going to start the second camera at frame 35. And as you can see, we're starting five frames before the, uh, the first camera ends. The first camera ends at 40. We're going to start at 35 because we want this overlap for the stage object that we're going to create here in a second. So before you do anything, create camera two. Call this cam two. And make sure you look through the camera. Okay, so click on this little dot here. Now we're looking through the camera. So for this one, we're gonna, I'm selecting the iPhone just to, so I can press S on the keyboard and we can frame it. And then rotate around. And now what we wanna do is Select your camera so we can add keyframes on top of it. If you don't select the camera, then you're going, to, you're going to be adding the keyframes on the selected object. So make sure the camera's selected and you're looking through it. So frame 35, we're going to start uh, at a keyframe, control click, and let's go to frame 70, and we're going to dolly in here. And let's do something like this. Okay, so control click on frame 70. Now we have this movement for camera 2. Okay. Let's create the third camera. Make sure you rename that to cam3. And you look through the camera. And let's select the iPhone, press S to frame it. And let's uh, rotate to the front, of, the front of it. For this camera, they want us to kind of just do this rotation. OK, so from left to right. So we're going to start here. Make sure to select the camera again. And let's see here. Forgot where the cam the last camera ended. It ended at frame 70, so we want to start five frames below. So we have an over uh, four, so we have an overlap. So at frame 65. Okay, so select the camera number three. Control click. That's your first keyframe. And let's go up to uh, frame 100 for the next one. Select your. I if you don't. Sorry, this next step. Watch when I rotate, the iPhone's not selected. It's not really rotating in the center. Um, but if you select the iPhone here, then rotate, it rotates here in the pivot point of the iPhone. All right, so just make sure when you do that, you reselect the camera to add the keyframe. So let's control click on 100 here. And now we have this movement for the camera number three. Okay. So if we look in the timeline, we have three different cameras, one, two, and three, and they all overlap. So if we go through this, you see there's an overlap here from one to two, and then here from two to three. Okay, so this is where the stage object comes in. Stage object is located under this little menu here. It says add floor object, but if you click on that and hold the click button down, you'll see a menu pop up. It's way down here, so stage object. All right, so at frame zero, what you want to do is select your stage, all right, and that's going to bring up these attributes here. And what you want to do is lock this, just so because that way this these attributes don't disappear. Just lock this with this little lock here. If you don't, you'll see that it disappears all the time. So just click on that, lock it, and then on. Make sure again you're in frame zero. Drag and drop your first camera into the camera slot. And then 
control click on this little circle for your first keyframe and then move to the overlap of one and two camera one and two which is around frame 37 38 come up here again drag and drop camera two onto the same slot which is in the camera slot As you can see they're changing so I let it go control click make a keyframe and now go into the overlap of two, camera 2 and camera 3 which is around 67 or 68 go back up here and drag and drop camera 3 onto the same slot and control click in the circle and that, that's your third keyframe so now as you can see if we kind of drag the timeline here ahead you see that the cameras switch All right, and that's how you utilize the stage object all right, so let's um, see how we bring this into After Effects now, the, the camera, the cameras. So first thing you want to do is create a, a null, just so let's say um, you want to create a null for the screen or for the iPhone. You want to do is select the iPhone here and then right click and add an external compositing tag. You really can't see it too well here, but it's this little icon here. Add the external compositing tag and that's going to create a null for you for the object, okay? So once you do that, uh, let's go into the render settings, which is this little button right here, and make sure you have all frames for the frame range selected, and you wanna have a file path, some sort of file path, because if you don't, you can't really save the compositing project file. This is uh, what we need to uh, spit out those cameras and that null into After Effects. So I have this checked out, I have a path here for this and we're gonna make sure you have include 3D data and the save, um, these two checked, and then save the project. So this is gonna take me into a folder that I already made, it's called iPhone 4. So we're gonna just overwrite this file, replace it, and now we're ready to go into After Effects and let's import in order to do this you have to have the uh, install the uh, cinema 4d to after effects exchange plugin and that should be inside your uh, cinema 4d uh, discs that you get or the download uh, there is a, a plugins folder for after effects for the exchange so we're going to import the file and that's the uh, iphone 4.aec that we just created all right, so let's open this up, double click on the composite file, and you will see here, let me turn off this back layer, that all these cameras do indeed show up. Okay, we also have, let me uh, zoom out here. You'll see, we go from camera one to camera two. Now this null is way at the bottom because the actual, if you remember in Cinema 4D, uh, let's select the iPhone here. You can see it's way at the bottom, um, the pivot. So when it exports out, that's going to be the same. It's going to reflect in, in uh, After Effects too. So it's way down here. So it's working as it should. As you can see, After Effects knows um, to split up these cameras. And there's multiple cameras. There's a Cam 1 here and a Cam 1 here. There's two camera 2s. Or actually, there's three cameras 2s. Uh, and there's uh, two camera threes, and they're all split up as they should be to create the uh, multiple camera import, and it looks perfect. So that's how you do it. Um, hopefully this helps uh, people. It's a little late, and I'm sorry if I sound a little monotone, but I'm kind of tired, but I just wanted to make this, and uh, hopefully it's uh, useful for, for you all. So anyway, thanks again for uh, tuning in and listening. And I hope uh, this helps you guys out. All right? Have a good one. Bye.